Yo quiero Taco Bell. What the fuck was that? Please remember the views and opinions expressed by this show or any other show on DV Radio and its guests are strictly those of said individuals and do not reflect those of the DV Radio staff nor the staff of dysfunctional veterans. I'm Nevermore, and I'm not normally this pleasant sounding. I'm Frosty, and I'm just a frozen asshole. And that's right, you got D.V. Hoik who loves to play and shit. I mean, no, <laughs> no, wait a minute, hold on. And they really didn't name your asshole one and two? That's what the boss calls it. <laughs> two people remember me and one's my mom. <laughs> oh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> we were a little bit soggy. Boiled bacon. <laughs> that's right. And I'd like to introduce D.V. Midnight Backdoor for all your backdoor needs. <laughs> you know what that means. We will talk really slow for you. I don't know, some of those nights at work. I say that's a different little bird. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Frag Out, Drag Out. Lord have mercy, you know what, I give up. Welcome to Frag Out, Drag Out. We're not waiting 30. Fuck this shit, man. I am Nevermore, and with me today, I have people that I can remember their call signs for. We have Frosty, Winky, and Uncle Fester. We'll go down the line, Marines first, because they're special. Frosty, how, you, how the hell are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I just woke up from a nap. I'm kind of cranky. Uh-oh. Winky boy. I'm here. You're here? I'm that here. was so exciting for me. <laughs> Thank you so much for your commentary. Thanks It'll for noticing me. <laughs> oh my God. Uncle Fester, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. You too, stinky. Stinky P.U. <sighs> I finally got a day off, so day I'm happy, off. happy, happy, because this has been the week from hell. I got slapped upside the head with a Subway sandwich, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so, y'all know how I feel about the medicinal cannabis, okay? It's neither here nor there, but when you're in a job and in a state where it's not legal, and they have a drug-free workplace, and you walk up to the managers and say, you smoked too much marijuana today? <laughs> we have a problem, and you're probably going to get drug tested. Okay? We couldn't even make it that far, because this fool, and I don't believe it was marijuana, because he was too damn mean. If you're on marijuana, you're hungry, you're sleepy, you are mostly not violent. I've never, I, I've caught thousands of shoplifters. And everyone that's ever been a weed has been happy as hell as long as I give them candy. They're great. You feed them. They sit in the office. They're chill. Half the time, I don't even charge them because they only stole like $10 worth and it's not even worth the effort. Whatever. This fucker walks into my office because my fucking door's open because I'm fucking painting, doing all these little chores for a visit. Strolls in, eating a Subway sandwich, and goes the fuck off on management. He's, he balls up his fist and I jump up and I was just tired and I was fucking pissed off and I just wanted to get my damn door painted so I could go home. I only had like what 30 minutes on my shift left. Yeah, I didn't get to leave on time. Well, no, not at all. I put my hands up and I'm like, no, no, no. Y'all sit down. Let's stop this. He starts swinging his fucking Subway sandwich at me and for the rest of the night, it never clicked to him that I'm asset protection, loss prevention, whatever you want to call me. Even security will work at this point. He goes, the damn painter doesn't know anything. And I'm like, the fuck? What are you talking about, the damn painter? He met me. I'm the damn painter. Apparently, I'm just the painter. I'm just the painter. I do my crappy art. But I see what's in your eyes. And I know what's in your heart. In the end of it, he goes, I had to call the police. You got so bad. At the end, he goes, what's the fucking painter know? And they're like, and she's still fucking painting. I'll turn around. I was like, yeah, you want to know why I'm still fucking painting? Because I can clock in tomorrow and you can't. Neener, neener, neener. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that's just one day of my stupid week. We're not even going to go on a tirade and bore these people with the rest of my week. <laughs> so I want to know what kind of sub it was. Well, I do, know it had, I do know it had mayo, lettuce, and tomato because I had to clean that up off the floor. It smelled Italian, because like I said, that shit went everywhere in that office. <laughs> and no black olives? Oh, terrible sandwich. I don't remember freaking sweeping up any black olives. And that was funny. Like, he threw half of it in the floor. 
you know, he's like, but I'm hungry and I'm broken. I really needed this job. And I'm a, I'm a goddamn adult. And I'm like, well, if you're a goddamn adult, then you would know if the place has a drug free policy, then you need to hold off on medicating until you're back the fuck home. Not on your lunch break where everybody notices the worst part. Yo, he wasn't even scheduled. He was so damn high. He just showed up and started working. I ain't never been that drunk or that high. Well, okay. First I've two. never been so high that I wanted to <laughs> fucking get up, get dressed, and go to fucking work. No, no. I wanted to be locked in my couch and eat spaghetti, pizza, and tacos. I've been so tired. I think I've woke up, put my uniform on, and get ready to go out, and I'm like, wait a minute. The fuck am I doing? It's Saturday. But that's, you know, usually after like an exercise or something that, you know, you've been lose track of days, but I've never actually gone to work. Well, yeah, I worked third shift and it was six on three off. So by like the second day or third day, you get all confused because, you know, you tried to stay up during the day and it didn't work and blah, blah, blah. And I've woke up and I've been, I'm late for work. And they're like, um, this is on your second day off of the rotation and it's three in the afternoon. Oh, <laughs> go back to bed then. Bye. Yep. <laughs> I was going to say, I've had that happen in the summers when I'm working 12s and after like a week and a half of them, you finally get a day off and actually get halfway to work and go, wait a minute, I don't have to go to work today. Speaking of, I can't mention the group's name because I promised I would never, ever put these dum-dums on blast. But somebody posted a picture today of a security forces airman at Taco Bell. <laughs> getting food and she's got her duty weapon that would be a 203 attached to that bad boy <gasps> and they're all bitching because she's got a weapon in a fucking restaurant yep well i can guarantee you the bell is on the air and the only thing she's guilty of is she's not wearing her cover because when your security forces and you're on duty even if you go into a gas station to pee if it's on base you have to take your duty weapon doesn't matter. You cannot leave it in the car with your partner. You can't do any of that. You have to take it with you, but you have to wear your cover to signify you're on duty and not just a crazed killer with a gun, I guess. I don't know, but the only thing she's doing wrong is she's not wearing her beret and the butt hurt. Oh my God <laughs> is hilarious. Lack of discipline. Look at that. I guess they want to be operator. And I'm like, no, she's actually, if she doesn't do it, she's breaking the rules and can get like, you know, in serious trouble for leaving her weapon behind. If you don't know about that branch of service, that's great. But before you post the picture to roast them, make sure you understand that that's actually <laughs> something that they can get article 15 for. Just so you know, that ain't even a counseling or whatever the fuck y'all call it. That's an actual article 15. I've actually had to go into stores with an M60 and my beret on. That's the only part that's irritate me. I'm like, why didn't you wear your cover? Maybe they don't do that anymore. But back then, if you were on duty with your weapon, you had to have your cover on if you were indoors someplace. No, I still see it. Like I said, I, for being 20 years, I, I, it hasn't been a day I haven't seen security forces, either, like you said, the shop at uh, – the, the BX, um, hell, the commissary for that matter, because there's a fucking pisser in the commissary. Well, yeah. I've I mean, seen them gone in wanted, there. But. If you want to get, because our squadron, we when we went out, there were two, you know, that well, back then it was actually three sides because law enforcement yep. and security wasn't together. Mm -hmm. But there's the nuke side, which is in a fenced-in area, and you don't get to come out. Then there's the flight line, which you mm -hmm. can rotate, and as long as two of you are out there, one of you can leave for food. Well, technically four the squadrons at the flight line. So then there's the people inside monitoring cameras and doing all that fun shit. And then there's law enforcement side. Well, the only thing that the inside locked up in the nuke area gets is, I don't care what y'all say about air force food and box lunches was hella nasty. <laughs> you always got some cruddy mm, soggy ass sandwich with what god knows mystery meat the lettuce is all wilted because it's two in the morning and you always got a hot sprite and you didn't get like you would think they would give you like a bag of chips or something at least something in there that's edible no it's always like wilted broccoli chunks or something <laughs> a bruised apple with a fucking worm still in it yeah you know. i mean literally the box <laughs> meals were the worst so you either packed your lunch or you hope that one of your squadron would say, hey, I'm making a lunch run, and they would deliver it to the gate. 
That's what we did. We always had pizza and shit because believe it or not, you can have pizza delivered to an, uh, um, a nuclear compound gate. They just can't come in. You just got to go up to the gate and get it. But what's funny is if you don't understand another base, I would not dare walk around and snap pictures on our Marine Corps base unless I was 100% that they were just being retarded versus wrong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. That's probably guaranteed. Well, yeah. I mean, like, if I see two Marines naked slipping, sliding down the hallway, I'm going to assume that they're out of wrecks. <laughs> well, the That's authorized activity, depending on where you're stationed. <laughs> but on a serious note, I'm literally reading this, and they're really seriously hurt. They're like, she's a grunt wannabe, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you do realize that if somebody did attack an Air Force base, God help them, there's only one group that's armed. And that's security forces. You can make fun of us. You can call us losers, the, whatever you want. But there's literally nothing standing between all of those innocent people except the security forces. Doesn't make us better. But I've actually, ch a Marine challenged me one time to the schools he's been to versus the schools I've been to. He went to basic training and he went to whatever in the hell y'all's version of tech school is to be a mechanic. Okay, that's sweet and all. Been to basic training been to basically BLET, which is the long, you know, the whole uh, six week, nine week, whatever. I don't even fucking remember. I'm so old. I've actually been to ground combat training in Fort Hood with the army. I've actually been to air base defense. And I don't remember how many other schools I've got certificates for. We actually are trained to like take back a nuclear weapon if we have to. Doesn't make us Billy really badasses, but I'm just <clears throat> saying I had an M60 and you didn't mean or need her. <laughs> <laughs> And I got to go to the BX with mine. I think they're impressed that she's carrying a two or three with it. I mean, like, are you are you having like, More like penis? jealous? Yeah, well, you like, I think that's a key. I are think you like having word. gun penis envy? Hers is bigger than yours. I mean, <laughs> well, some of those comments in there, Marines are just mad because she's carrying Subway instead of a sixty-four pack of Crayola. I mean, <laughs> it's just cracking me up. It's not even a frag. Out. It's just cracking me up that they don't understand they're required to do that. If I want a drink. Back then, we didn't have like a billion and one different little stores on Air Force Base, but you'd go to the 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 BX and and you know if you wanted your snacks or whatever. I mean, I had to walk through that son of a bitch with an M16 and an ammo can and the A gunner kit because I didn't have an A gunner. <laughs> so I mean, I don't know what hell broke was going to break loose in the shop at where I needed to lay down, you know, um, auto suppress the fire, but I had it. <laughs> Matter of fact, I would put all of that, except for the M60, I had to wear that, in the damn shopping cart so that I could actually use my hands. I mean, like, I don't get it. I mean, are y'all just jealous that that your, like, security forces can't walk into a store with their gun on? Or, or do they not carry anything but pistols? I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know. Some of these rules have changed since I was in, so. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Back then, we had no choice. We had to do it. It was one of those things where you either towed it or you don't get out and fucking go. I think what I think what we used to do, or, or at least on the Marine Corps base, you had your buddy stand outside with the guns and then minus your sidearm, and he'd he'd take care of the, the long guns and you'd go get the whatever you're having for lunch. Yeah, we couldn't do that. Whatever, because he. Back then, when we were separated, security specialists had then another title, and they were either a machine gunner specialist, which I, or a 60 gunner specialist, or a 203 specialist, or just plain M16 or whatever. Well, whatever you were assigned, you couldn't necessarily pass off to the other person because they may or may not have been to 60 school. So I had to take it. Now, those light days where, you know, they were feeling sorry for me and I'd have to go fill in at the gate. But like I said, we weren't cross-trained, so it was very rare. But when I had to go to the gate, I still carried a 203. So, I mean, it's never like I had anything like pistol size. Of all the things I qualified for, they never, ever had us qualify for the pistol because we weren't law enforcement side. So it was either carry a 16, a 16 with a 203, or a 60. I mean, at least, at least they didn't make us carry in the law rockets and shit. Those did get to stay locked in the trunk. <laughs> and then, of course, to top it all off, like Frosty pointed out in the pre-show, there's the Taco Bell eating contest flyer in the background. 
bet you got people commenting on that shit too. <laughs> bet you go ruin your butthole. <laughs> uh, you at least damn beret on. At least she's carrying Subway, so you know. <laughs> and I oh could be gosh. wrong on what I said because I was one of them mechanics and not security forces or whatever. Military police. Well, like I said, they. I know things have changed, but apparently that's still around. I mean, I always got tickled because they would make us train for every scenario. And I was like, you know, they made it sound like that any moment, a bunch of aircraft were going to fly over an air force base and just swoop <laughs> in and start stealing nukes. Cause you had to know how to, t you know, the to take down aircraft and to do this and to do that. And, and it, what was funny is they always got the Marines. Um, those were always our opponents. I don't know why they just felt, they just like to torture us. So, you know, at that point, <laughs> we never would get to win because, you know, it's security forces versus Marine gross. But they would come in and they would do the night off. So, you know, they would steal the pretend nuke and we would have to try to recover it and yep. all that fun stuff with the Miles gear. And but and I don't even know what kind of shit they do now. You know, I haven't been in and God knows since 1998. So yeah, well, they, they they don't like security forces near the flight line anymore because you know last time I I was at uh, my not this base my last base someone decided to oh how fast is that aircraft coming in and they fucking lit it up with a radar gun well little do they know that the B one has self defense measures on it so the pilot's coming in thinking it's a routine landing everything's hunky dory and then all of a sudden all these bells and whistles and defense things go off chaff and flare launches and he fucking goes full AB and launches sideways. Needless to say, the pilot got out and shit himself because, <laughs> you know, he's coming in for a nice, calm, and cool, relaxed landing. And all of a sudden, the fucking self-defense mechanisms go off in the aircraft. <laughs> Fucker, well, full AB launches and just goes sideways. So, well, yeah, see, where we were separated, we didn't have radar guns, or we probably would have done shit like that. Do you know <laughs> how many, and especially during when, you know, shit got hot and the, um, uh, war, war hogs and stuff would have to fly out because they were heading over because I was in between wars, but it was still during the desert storm era. So there would still be shit popping off where they'd scramble the fighter pilots and all that good shit. But when they would do that, you would be on the front end of a bird forever because they don't keep them loaded. They have to go out there and load them and it takes time. When they say scramble the fighter pilots, it's not like you see in movies where they go rear, rear, fighter pilots and they like run out there, jump on the plane and they take off and they go save the day in under 20 minutes. That shit does not happen. That shit <laughs> takes about 16 hours before they get to go anywhere. Well, not in all scenarios because no. NORAD because we do have about, I don't know how many, was it half a dozen or so, 22s that sit in a little building and they, they sleep there in that building. They're on a rotation. And when NORAD calls because some Russian wants to play stupid fuck buck games, we launch our 22s within a matter of minutes. Well, yeah, notified. and they have that for like, you know, if, um, you know, since 9-11, if somebody yep. comes into airspace and stuff. But the old way was you didn't really keep oh, anything yeah. like that going. And no. I know, and well, and it also depended on what threat level you were in too. During that time, I think we mostly stayed in orange just because we were at the end of, desert storm and getting ready to do desert shield so people were starting to rotate over to saudi and stuff like that getting ready to to i don't know why they did it that way for the air force but first you went to saudi then you went to iraq but i i was in so long ago they didn't even let the females go over to any of those countries because we were not allowed anywhere unescorted even on base you couldn't like walk from the barracks to work because you weren't allowed to be as a female, not escorted. And there was, you know, and that was some weird shit. I mean, they got to go, but nobody ever, cause they would look for volunteers. Nobody, none of it mostly filled up with guys. Cause we were like, I'm not covering my face. I don't want to have to live like that. I can't even drink a damn Coke. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. you know? But I have had all those fucking wonderful shots to go over there, though. They made us all get ready just in case because, like I said, it was when they were getting ready to heat up and they were like, yeah, you may be going to war. And I'm like, I'm in the Air Force. I do not go to war. We do not go to war. Robots go to war for us. You know, <laughs> I just have to guard the robots. How bad can it be? But you shouldn't say that because I think right before I got to Barksdale, um, I want to say it was in Saudi, the entire security force squadron got blown up. So... 
I know, I know. We're in the Air Force. You, you don't get hurt in the Air Force unless your chair breaks, but that's not <laughs> true. Y'all have no idea. Make fun of us all you want, but every branch has its own unique bunch of bullshit. You're not special. <laughs> Trust me, you're not special. Chip a fingernail on your keyboard? Yeah. I didn't have a keyboard. Would love to have, though. I, I got light duty after I had my freaking wisdom teeth took out. That was like where I'd been used to like pacing the flight line or having to walk the field and all that stuff. I would just sit there and roll from desk to desk like, <laughs> I really got to just shred paper for 12 hours. Well, yeah, just shred paper, nothing else. Yeah, you're not trained to do any of this other computer stuff. So you just really want me to sit at this paper shredder and do that stack over there. Well, yeah, that you should get that done today. Uh, that's half a room. <laughs> well, go back in there and you'll get done quicker. Uh, they literally had rooms full of paper that just needed shredding. And I guess they waited for the gimp squad to shred it. I don't fucking know. So what's like not it. enough coat. See, the great thing about the air force was we didn't get much and they actually gave me pain medicine after I had my wisdom teeth done. That's why I couldn't be on the flight line with my gun. Apparently you're not supposed to carry a gun when you're, uh, <laughs> have narcotics in you yeah exactly like <laughs> who would have thunk it <laughs> no but you can stick your fingers in a paper shredder that's fine <laughs> yeah that was like six days of hell because literally for six days and it, and i was impatient and would always break it because not on purpose but like too much paper would go in there and they're like that would come in there and he's like I've already given you two shredders and I'm like, um, whoopsie. <laughs> and you're taking all the staples out, right? My fingers are bleeding, aren't they? <laughs> yes, sir. I, of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> of course I fucking wasn't. No way. <clears throat> I did not do half of what they said to me. What, what, what did our paper shredder eat? A sandwich, banana peel, orange peels. I forget what <laughs> orange peels made it smell good. Uh, <laughs> Half a loaf of bread? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, y'all are laughing. Anything we could find went into that shredder just to see what it would do. <laughs> if they had put me in a room that had anything in it, that may have been possible, but literally it was just mountains and mountains and pounds and pounds and pounds of paperwork that just shred. And I'm like, <laughs> I wonder if I can get 50 in here. <laughs> Uh-oh. Captain. <laughs> He's like, I'll be glad when you go back to the flight line, you can't break stuff. And I'm like, no, I just get the mechanics and shit to fix it before you find out I already broke it. <laughs> All right. It's just kind of one of those cool my beer moments, Captain. Yeah. Uh, now yeah, our shredder I mean, can't stand more than about five pages at a time. Well, I mean, did you try a box of crayons in it to make confetti? That's fun. Yeah. I did get to do that. He doesn't get past the snack portion of it. <laughs> Shredding a CD is actually pretty cool. Or he did you, do that a few times. I always wanted to like not me personally do it, but shred C four to see what would happen. You just get shredded C four unless you add uh, heat. Well, think about it. If you've shredded a bunch of stuff, it's warm in there and it could spark. I don't know. I just want to see what would happen. Just to, you know, say I've shredded C four and woohoo. <laughs> Probably just gum up the machine. Probably. Well, you know how to fix that. Set it on fire, <laughs> and then you'll get a good boom. How did you blow Set it on up? Fire. The... Set it on fire and then step on it. Can you imagine? How did you manage to blow up a room and the paper shredder? Well, um, you remember the C4 that we were using for the breaching door exercise? I put some in the shredder. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. <laughs> oh, my captain would have come in there so fucking mad. Anyway. Some of those now... guys didn't have uh, you know, sense of humor, did they? Oh, my captain did not have it. He was one of those lifers that had been in security forces his entire fucking time since age 18 to 102. So he had no fucking <laughs> sense of humor. Oh, like, my. he would come in there and he's like, you're a disappointment. You should have done finish this room. And I'm like, you're a fucking disappointment. I'm on narcotics and I keep squirreling and coloring. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, one of the guys I went to high school with, he's actually chief now. And security forces. So, you know, hats off to them. Well, while you're talking, Oink, do you want to mention our lovely sponsors? Oh, but of course. One of our favorite sponsors, of course, is the good old cave bar soap company. Ditch the bar. Grab a grenade. You know, for those guys that uh, need that man scent, 
instead of, uh, you know, those chemically filled ones you get at those supermarkets. Yeah, tell your wife, this the bar, to grab the grenade, K-Bar Soap Company. Oh, and, of yeah. course, they do have great other products as well for your beers if you're, uh, unless you're following me challenged like I am. So They also have stuff for your hands. Keep them knife hands looking slick. That's right. And don't forget our good buddy. Why would you not want to be friends with him? Go check out <laughs> NFG Vets. They've got a Facebook page, I think some Instagram, and there's a website that I can never remember the address to, but Frosty usually chimes in with it. Nothing. Do what? Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> I had a shiny run across my screen. <laughs> NFG Vets website? Oh, yes. NFGVets.org. Oh, well, that's, see, that's fucking simple. All right there, <laughs> there you go. Go check out my buddy. I think he's actually managed to keep this page. He's, uh, but I've, I haven't really seen a lot of his posts lately, so I'm wondering if he's getting throttled again. You'll see me share his stuff on um, my page, the original Never Mourn Friends. We just don't tag because Facebook's such a dickhead now that if you share their stuff straight out or tag them, it throttles you too. And that kind of doesn't help them at all. So we just, you know, screenshot it, clip it off, and then just say, hey, our buddies at NFG Vets, we don't post the link anymore because they're, like I said, they're complete assholes. When they throttle you now, they really get you. But go check him out. He's a great dude. And I've really still saying this, but I really got to get down there and shoot the full autos. Yes, they've got full autos at Shooters Express, who's also sponsoring DB Radio on WDBR. Yeah. All right, I've talked this whole show. Y'all's turn. Hello? Mufasa? <laughs> Hello. 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 Oh, oh come on. I know one of y'all. Well, see, Frosty's on mute. So okay. like, he, he oh. probably found crayons. So one of y'all talk. I don't know. Anything good happened this week? Bad? Interesting? Stupid? I got my, I got my very first K-Bar order. And Ooh, what's, yeah, that's what, for life. what flavors did you get? We don't say since he's a Marine. What flavors <laughs> did you get? Um, well, I got two salt, two salt dogs, uh, napalm in the morning and I'm trying to think of what it was. The other one, um, Holy hell! I think it was whiskey and bad decisions. Well, be careful with that salt dog. Not everybody can put that on bare skin everywhere. Salt dog is what I use to remove hair dye that has stained my skin or and we 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 don't get lava soap we don't get any of that shit anymore because i have found that no matter what it could be wood stain it could be sharpie it could be paint it could be whatever and salt dog takes that shit off my hands without completely stripping my hands of skin but uh it's not for sensitive areas unless you're a brave son of a bitch oh i'm brave <laughs> uh, because uh let's see here i had my first shower uh this past weekend Oink only showers mm. once a month. His K bar lasts forever. It uh, does, unfortunately. Well, with my mobility issues. Well, yeah. Um, I had to have a vanity taken out of the bathroom since I got my new wheelchair, and I finally could get back into the shower again. And so, after six months, I needed to get something to get rid of all the excess old skin. Well, <coughs> excuse me. I will say that. One thing that I, we have not been able to uh, attest to is when you're disabled and stuck in a chair all the time, you can develop sores, you can develop like rough skin and stuff like that. And the one good thing about K-Bar is it's all natural. You don't have those chemicals and there's something in his soap that just makes your skin like freaking silk. I will use Salt Dog because I'm a girl, if I'm going to shave my legs, because it's wintertime now, time to be furry, but not kidding, I'm kidding y'all. Anyway, it's great for a pre-shave, and you dudes should try it on your face. It's great for, like, getting all that dead skin so all the hair follicles are up and doing what it needs to and um, all that goody stuff. But on a serious note, uh, I've noticed I used to have this severe problem. Um, I don't know if it was anxiety or what caused it, but I would dig gouges into my legs. I would wake up and there'd be such deep grooves because my nails are long that I would, you could like tell where my fingers went and I'd be bleeding. I haven't had that problem unless, well, when my dad passed, I did because my anxiety was so fucking high, but it cured that. I mean, I won't, when I travel, I get the travel box and the tin because he's got a little travel tin that your widow soap fits in. 
actually get rid of all the hotel soap, which by the way, I got bashed for doing on the interwebs, but whatever. Fuck you. They have no <laughs> sense of humor. They're like, you could have taken that and given it to a homeless person. I was like, he gives all of his soap to homeless people, like any soap. And I'm not talking about bad soap, but any soap that's not up to his quality of cell, not because of ingredients, but because of how it looks, he donates. So if it's got a chip in it and he don't want to give it to a customer, he will donate it all. He doesn't throw that shit away. So bite me that I threw that itty bitty teeny tiny little stinky bar of hotel soap in the trash and replaced it with K bar. Assholes. <laughs> right? I mean, people find anything to bitch about on the internet now. Yep. And have y'all not seen my post on the original Nevermore? I've got a sick, twisted motherfucker at my store. I keep finding all over the store send toes. Not nudes, send toes. I've either got a serial killer that cuts off toes or some sick fuck that likes to lick toe jam. <laughs> but, well, you is in North Kakanaki. I'm going to go with the latter. Feet are fucking disgusting. <laughs> I don't care how much fucking K-bar what, what about you pig, use. What about pig's feet? Ew. Pickled pig's feet. No. Could just be a jarhead with a foot fetish. Could be. Could be. But they spelled it all right. That's how I knew I wasn't a Marine. <laughs> and they didn't use crayon and paper. They actually used letters. So, But, I, you know, theater to me are just weird. It's killing me that people even, I mean, even I know it's a joke because I guess they're trying to keep it clean enough to not say send nudes because kids are walking around which means they have some sort of conscience, but I just find it hilarious, you know, <laughs> hilarious. So um, I think we're at our 30 minutes. I'm not sure because they got to having a conversation in here. We are ready for break. So with that, we are going to take a break and we'll be right back after a message from our sponsors and whoever else Bo decides to throw in here. Love you, Bo. Mean it. Be back. TV Radio. What's TV Radio? TV Radio is for you, the veteran, active duty service member, caregiver, and civilian supporter of the military. TVRadio.net is the online veteran network made for and by veterans. From original shows to syndication, you can find it here on TVRadio.net. In an effort to continue our mission and make better quality shows for each and every one of you, visit our Patreon at Patreon.com forward slash DVRadio. Whether you can only pledge $1 per month or that entire million dollar inheritance your uncle left you there's a tier with rewards waiting for you so why not keep dv radio running and get rewarded at the same time head to patreon.com forward slash dv radio now that's patreon.com forward slash dv radio dv radio Shooters Express is Charlotte's number one destination for all personal defense sport instruction and recreational shooting supplies they offer concealed carry classes for only $29.95. That's only $29.95 for concealed carry classes. And if you're military or law enforcement, you'll receive great deals and be eligible for even more at Shooters Express. So head over to Shooters Express in Belmont, North Carolina, or visit ShootersExpress.com for more information and monthly deals. At Shooters Express in Belmont, North Carolina. This is not a fan from Shooters Express and is provided solely by DB Radio for your charge. We're back on the air. We're back on the air. TV radio. Did everybody remember to pee? With me, we still have. Oink Frosty and Uncle Fester. Uncle Fester's still learning his groove. I'm sure he'll talk and jump in there when he can. We're trying to teach him how to be a great host. <laughs> we just kind of threw him in the mix after last week. So there you go. I didn't his pee. Graphic is coming I soon. pooed. <laughs> I'm never going to get over that. He's so grown up now. Just brings his hair to the eye. I know, right? I feel like that Oink's been potty training him at work and like has been giving him crayons as rewards or something. <laughs> oh, you didn't pee on a plane. Here's you a purple. <laughs> Uh, Ew. <laughs> he likes his green crayon. Y'all leave him alone. That's right. <laughs> That's green is for when he's good, though. Well, I mean, if he didn't pee on the plane and pee in the potty, I guess he deserves a green. Maybe. 
So Frosty's going to read a quick uh, public service announcement when he hits the unmute. Trying to do three things at once. It wasn't working. <laughs> okay, all you assholes, I need some help. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Somebody's grandfather turns 100 this weekend, and he was in the Navy in World War II. Obviously, we're trying to make his birthday amazing as possible. I even talked to the Pentagon, and they're sending personnel to the party. What I need from you is birthday cards or, or just hand-scribbled notes. His address is Frank Bell, 1351 Lombe, L-A-M-B-E Road, Snow Camp, North Carolina, 27349. Thank you, and now you can go back to your normal fuckery. <laughs> All right, our show airs um, on the 8th, so if you're hearing this past the 11th, not saying you can't send him cards, I just wouldn't send birthday, you can send him some sort of greeting. And I am really fucking disappointed in Frosty. I really, really, really fucking thought he would do this phonetically because, you know, military's listening and they're going to be like, what letters do you need, Shay? But I'm really disappointed. I thought out of everybody that Dan Marine would do it. I'm getting too used to having to do it the Air Force way. <laughs> we use the phonetic alphabet. I was going to say, not many of them do now. Charlie. Really? Hotel. Alpha. India. Romeo, chair. I, I'm I'm laughing because <laughs> do they really not seriously? Not really. That was one of the, and what's funny to me is my the law enforcement phonetic alphabet and the military phonetic alphabet are two entirely different things. So my buddy got stuck on K and there's his king. Well, he couldn't figure out he he I, you know we get brain glitches. And he was like, cake, cake, cake. And I was like, kilo. And he's like, kilo, wait, what? that sounds like a drug. And I'm like, but that's what it is. And he's like, it's king. Now I remember. And I was like, you just said kilo on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, it is kilo for us. But, you know, he was just like, he goes, y'all got some uh, weird names. I'm like, not really. I mean, yours are dumb because yours is like king and uh, uh, Paul and and I'm like, mm, yours aren't near as funny because you're using names like George and Frank and just whatever. It's like you just made up. It's it's almost like the hurricane season when they just make up a bunch of names in alphabetical order. I think oh. I think one year they had 26 um, hurricanes and that's what the police decided to use as their phonetic alphabet. Yeah, they've come up with. I've heard some weird ones on the radio up there and this was a contractor that did it but we had a taxiway daisy and everybody's like you could hear you could almost hear everybody go what <laughs> that was listening to the radio well i guess i've i've kept that habit because when we let them know tag numbers and stuff like that and it's it's gotten so bad that even my partner knows 95 percent of the uh phonetic alphabet because you know like when you call in something that's like zmd it all sounds the same so i'm like zulu I don't remember him now because my brain just farted. Mike. Mike. There you go. November. And so he does that shit, but he mixes the two, the military and the police. So he's come at, I get to laughing sometimes when he does it, he'll do it. And I'm like, I know what you mean, bro, but damn, that's funny. The one shit, of those that some days I got the, it and other days I don't. It's the dumb shit that we remember, you know, it's like out 20 years and I remember the phonetic alphabet better than I remember other shit. And just, I don't know. Hello, PTSD and memory problems. Whatever. Live with it and move on. It's sad. The Marines are memory. What's that tell you? <laughs> what about the what about your firemen? You have to make up letters instead of like just reading letters? Uh normally we use phonetic alphabet. Which one? The police one or ours? Well, actually, uh probably mixed. Um, I'm more familiar with the military, uh, phonetic alphabet, um, than, uh, what the police use. So I only remember two codes for the police in this state. They're, they're different everywhere. I remember 1072, which means when they say that I back up cause somebody's fixing to go to jail and 1073, which means I back up cause somebody's fixing to go to the loony bin. Uh, <laughs> if I hear either one of those, then I'm, I know to get in my corner. So they got room. <laughs> Uh, 1069. That is not a code. Dead body. <laughs> but it was so cute because we've got a bunch of new members of management 
And my manager come in the room the other day, the new one, and he was like, I don't know what to call this guy. He's such a, such a, and he was telling me the, the behavior. He was the one I went, Blue Falcon. He goes, oh my God, yes, Blue Falcon. Wait, how do you know that? And I went, wait, how do you know that? Because most people don't under, don't know that term unless you're in the military or always with the military. And he, he was like, I did six years in the army. And I was like, I would have guessed Navy. And he started laughing, not making fun of him, but he ap actually happens to be homosexual. So Navy just blurted out my mouth and he goes, <laughs> no army. And I'm like, Oh, sorry. He just died laughing. I thought I'm fixing to get a red book, which means you're under investigation for ethics. And I was like, I'm fixing to get a red book. Cause I just basically just called him gay in the Navy. <laughs> sorry. Well, in, in the Marines, don't they call it a Bravo Foxtrot? I don't know what they call it in the Marines. I tried not to associate with them fuckers. Air Force Either a Bravo Fox, Foxtrot or a Blue Foxtrot. Blue Fox. Can you, can you imagine? I, and Oink can tell me, tell you this too. Air Force, and I don't know if they're still that way. They used to be so stuck up. Like they were the, their uniforms had to look better. And that was back when we had BDUs and you can make them crisp and not this stupid shit now that always looks wrinkly. But like if you saw other branches of service, your head went higher in the air and blah, 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 blah. And it was always our, our lectures about when you're hanging off base. Cause in Lackland, especially they changed, they trained a bunch of security forces, not just for us, like for several branches. And it'd be so funny. And they'd be like, now, if you go out, make sure you don't hang out with the Marines or you may come back in handcuffs, which, you know, in their defense it did happen once. <laughs> Probably. I went true. out with the Marines to a party. I was a naughty, naughty person. I wasn't 21. There happened to be a Marine that looked exactly fucking like me, so I used her ID and her <laughs> uniform. Snuck <laughs> <laughs> off base with the Marines and crawled back on base and got in trouble. But I mean, I didn't get any charges, and the people who caught me just because they happened to be friends of mine, they're like, We're dragging you to your room. And if you ever talk about this again, we're going to have to kill you. So I'm probably dead now. Maybe they're dead now. I don't know. Yeah, you definitely. Do. I mean, these freaking new ABUs where they don't iron them or anything else, they do look like bad guy assholes, if you ask me. And then the OCDs, you know, now we're looking more like Army than anything else or whatnot. So yeah, it's, I don't know if I'm it's sorry. gotten any better I miss or not. black boots. I'm sorry, but those brown boots that like the Army and stuff wears, Literally after a week, they're so dingy, grungy, and I've seen it. There's no way to really clean them, son of a bitches. If you no. fucked up your black boots, all you did was dye them and then shine them. A little spit and polish, and it was good to go. Well, yeah, and you could strip them down. If you got a big gouge in the damn thing, strip all that shit off, and re restart applying. I mean, it was it took work, but you could still do it. When we went through but the obstacle course. Stupid suede I, shit. Oh, come yeah. on. When we went through the obstacle course, when I got back, I noticed my boots were white. Like there was so much water and stuff. It had turned my boots white. That after the, after whatever caused them to turn white and I like dyed them and started over. That was the best fucking shines I ever got. I hated when I killed those boots and I actually went to, and, I'm, and here's where everybody's gonna make fun of me. I actually went to low techs but they were still black. You know, you could still shine them, whatever. I just didn't wear the boots on my calf. I wore low techs. I kind of miss those suckers. Cause I'm sorry, combat boots. Y'all may not think so, but those black combat boots are the most funky fucking comfortable boots on concrete ever. And I miss that. You can't find the old style, even at like the army Navy store where my feet, cause you know, they only come in men's sizes. My feet are so tiny. I, you know, the air force had them because you know, women had to wear them too, but you can't find them. And I miss them because I walk on concrete all day and I miss my fucking boots. But they uh -huh. was, I don't know what I did to them and ruined them. But after that was the best shot. And I'm not talking about this. When I, we called it cheater shine back then. People would mop and glow or what I called the Insta glow. <laughs> you know, you painted it on and it would be so fucking shiny. But what they didn't realize is after five or six paintings, their boots cracked and looked like shit. Yep. And there was no fixing it except to strip them down. And they wouldn't want to do that. Or and until back someone then, steps on them. And then back then they also had this stuff that you put on them. And then I don't know why they thought this was a great idea, but you put them in the oven and it would seal and it would be like high gloss, but I could get that by hand. I just, I'm one of those people. I, I love shining boots. It was so therapeutic. Well, you know, said, you my trick it. was always a uh, parade gloss with a light coat of 30 weight oil over it. Worked, looked great. So you walk through some dirt or sand. 
No, I did the, <laughs> I'm talking like, you know, you're sitting there heating with the lighter, heating your boot up so the wax yeah, would yeah. melt in it. Cotton ball Nothing in ice. Shit. Hell no, yeah. but the, the cotton ball in ice water, because if you dipped it in ice water over the heated wax on the boot, it was fucking fabulous. I would have them looking like no tomorrow. Like when we would have inspections, the fucking captain would be like, hey, do you mind doing my boots? And I'm like, it cost you 20. <laughs> I mean, Over while people, you're switch shining, use uh, less green to help uh, uh, thin out the polish. But it was even in basic, you know, as stressed out and stuff. Um, at night, before when we were getting ready for the next day, I would sit in there with like a headlamp on and just shine my boots until I could go to sleep. I've never been able to sleep at night. I mean, I did them first two weeks because that wore the hell out of me getting up at but as crack and dawn for PT, but. I would love, there's nothing more, I don't care what you say, there's nothing more therapeutic than shining boots. Now, ironing's for the fucking birds. I iron that shit. I was so bad that, like, my BDUs, I took that double-sided um, tape that goes in clothes, <laughs> and I put that in my creases. <laughs> like, I folded it, I put it in the crease, and then once you iron it and sealed all of that together, you had a permanent crease. Like, my uniform could stand up by its damn self. There would be so much starch that that shit would flake. But I won't iron a damn thing to this date. I refuse. I will not, like, micro-fold. <laughs> Air Force was about perfection and OCD. I swear that's where it came from. But like ladies underwear back then, because granny panties in, in basic, sorry, y'all. I don't know what they do now, but they had little ridges on it. They would actually want you to line up them little fucking ridges. Nah, I just wide that shit up throw it in the drawer now. Screw that. <laughs> I won't iron, but if you gave me a set of boots right now that could polish, I'd fucking polish them. See, I had a, I had a good mind. deal because I could polish them, but my, my roommate could do a better job of polishing. But I could iron the shit out better than he could. So it was kind of a, a trade-off. I'd iron his shit, and he'd polish my boots. Yeah, now my second roommate. Uh, how the hell did I get fucked into doing both for me and the wife? What the fuck was up with that shit? <laughs> my second roommate. Now, she was one of those that when she ironed, the uniform was, like, fucking solid. Like, it was stuck together, and but it didn't. I don't know what she did different than me, but you wouldn't see the flakes and stuff. But back then, we had summer weight and winter weight. Yep. Summer weight's got those lines through it. Something about putting that starch in between it would make it like shine, like bring attention to it. So she did all the, um, we never had to go to the fucking seamstress because she sewed everything on and it would be immaculate. Like she'd be over there with the ruler and a magnifying glass. She did the ribbon, she did the uniforms and I did the boots and she had um, mornings and I had nights. So, you know, we, we had the same days off together. Them three days she would take cause I usually kept five to six uniforms because you get kind of funky doing exercises every night. So nobody wants to go to the laundromat when you only got five hours of sleep. So, but she would fucking do the uniforms for the whole six days. And I would have to do the boots every day. Cause you know, we didn't have 20 sets of boots, but I'm telling you what I told her, I said, if it's freaking raining, I am going to be stuck in my uniform, like literally, because it that starch became like glue. It was so bad. <laughs> I remember those days. Mm -hmm. Everybody else used the fucking um, dry cleaners because the dry cleaners could do, you know, they did a hell of a job on our uniforms. I ain't gonna lie, but I didn't even take my dress blues to them anymore. After after her, uh, everything held. I mean, they would hold in there, and it would be like a piece of cardboard hanging. That's how stiff it was. Mm -hmm. You'd have to break that shit open. I'm like, I feel like my uniform's going to crack. <laughs> it's funny because you could go in there and, you know, you get the nice little, you know, old Asian lady and she, oh, you want heavy starch this time? No, no, no. Just light starch. You're fucking light? heavy starch. That shit was fucking a <laughs> sheet of steel coming out of that motherfucker. You could barely put your arm through that goddamn thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean or racist or anything, but if you said heavy starch, you were going to pry open your uniform with a crowbar. <laughs> light, yeah, star <laughs> light starch to us. And her Ooh. version of light starch were two entirely different things. And I don't know, maybe it was Air Force bases, but there was always an Asian lady at the dry cleaners. Always. 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 And at the seamstress, too. too. Didn't speak a fucking lick of English, but she, you know, like a lot of people, I don't know if the other branches do it, but after you get your basic dress blues, they hang a certain way and they're like, baggy 
uh, they fit in the waist, but they're baggy. So most people had their shit tailored and like the girl shirts were like straight down. And a lot of us would have it taken in on the side and make them look nicer and all that stuff. But I didn't speak a lick English, but if you put it on and just stood there with your arms out and whatever you do, don't fucking breathe. Cause you'd get you with a stick pin in the rib cage every single time. <laughs> I have more scars from the Asian lady than I actually do from service. But oh, there was something about it, though. But her version of light starch would be my version of half a can. <laughs> so did you all have to deal with the clutchbacks that went, like, on the back of your ribbons? Ever have those things pop off? Um, I actually used a fucking eraser on the back of mine versus that pen because I found out in the first, like, week of wearing – because, you know, in basic, you don't got anything on your uniform. But I found out the first week of, like – having to wear that that ribbon bar and the back fell off and it embedded in my boob um <laughs> that i was never doing that again so i used uh and you you had to change them quite frequent because once you know once it bored out a little bit but i used i had endless cheap ass pencils that i pulled the erasers out of and i'd cut that in half and put it on the back of each pin because once that embeds into your breast you're done mm -mm. I don't know. I've I've had I've had those things fall off back my uh, back of my ribbons before. God, those things hurt. Uh -huh. With ours, with our ribbons and stuff, we put a piece of our web belt between the pit, the the caps yep. and the and the the ribbons. That seems to order, keep everything all locked in, nice and tight. If you order those low profile ones, you know they were half the length. Where were we all like thirty years ago when I could have used all this information? <laughs> Dude, let me tell y'all. You know. Again, Air Force is so OCD, but like we, we use those, um, I call them, they're not the green blousing straps for the bottom of your pants. I wore those things daily because I could not stand rolling up my pants and just tying them off like some of these bags of ass did. I always use that. But the ones that the shirt stays, dude, you know what I actually use them some of the bitches for? <laughs> you know, they still inspect your room. They still inspect your barracks. I had my bed set up with an extra set of those crisscross. So all I had to do when I got out of bed was literally pull up the, like straighten out the pillow and fold the blanket. Cause even the covers, the top cover, everything was blouse strapped under the bed. So when I got in it, I had to actually pull it out from the wall a little bit. I would have to get to the end of the bed, get up feet first and slide in because you couldn't lift my covers up almost as bad as the mummy sleeping bags. I don't, I don't know about y'all, but there's nothing worse than being in the field, getting in a mummy sleeping bag, getting up, you know, settled on your cot and then going, I got to pee. Oh, I love the sleeping bags. Uh, you won't when it's like two degrees and you've been up for three days straight and you finally get to lay down. And just as your eyes go to close, you realize you've got to pee. You've got to get redressed. You can't, you can't just walk up there in your PJs. And you got to go a mile and a half to the bathroom. And then you got to come back, figure out how to get back in there because everybody's asleep and zipped up because you can't fucking move. I, there would be many a time I'd have to lay there all night having to pee and not being able to sleep because I didn't want to get up to go pee, which makes no sense. But Well, for the boys, Gatorade bottle. Who is ready for a frag out? You're my hero. Uh, frag out. So a local group today posted about an article about thanking veterans for their service. Some like it, some don't. This is not what that's about. What this is about is some dumb dumb who actually posted on her own Facebook to come up to her bakery to see how gorgeous she is. Now, remember that line. <laughs> that just because you're a veteran, you're not you're does not make you a hero. No one's saying that when you thank a veteran for their service that they're a fucking hero, okay? I personally don't like being thanked, but if you do, I try to say my pleasure or something like that or thank you for your support or something, you know, instead of being all awkward and weird. I don't get mad. I know that there's the, the, the bro vets out there that demand to be thanked for their service and then there's the other vets out there that for whatever reason are ashamed to be thanked. I just take it or leave it because the way I look at it is the Vietnam vets would have given anything for somebody to acknowledge them and thank them and not spit on them and boo them and call them baby killers. So now that more people are doing it and are supporting, I can't knock it. I'm not going to take like the 10 people that come up and say, hey, thank you for your service 
and bash them so that they never say it to a Vietnam vet. Okay, so I don't work that way. But none of us ever claim to be heroes. But what we do claim is, I didn't see your ass standing in line with your hand up signing that check. You know, yeah, I was Air Force. The chances of me getting killed in war wasn't likely, but there are training accidents. There's so many other ways to die in the service. Y'all think that war is the only way we go. Every other day you're reading a, a, a crash or something, a training exercise gone wrong. We're not saying we're heroes, but it takes a special kind of person to actually go and go through with it and do it. Not everybody can do it. Not everybody's willing to do it. Some people are physically unable. Some people are mentally unable, whatever. But to sit there and say, I refuse to thank them because they all think they're heroes pisses me the fuck off. Okay? I get the article. It's a fine line. Some vets like it, some don't. 95% of the time, I just go, the pleasure was mine or whatever. Thank you for your support. But I mean, I don't know why you think that it, uh, you're either hanging out with bro vets or you've never met a vet, a real vet. I just, I'm just, I just kind of want to go to her bakery and, see, and tell her how ugly I think she is because she's local and say, you're not as gorgeous as you're bragging about. Just saying, dumbass bitch. <sighs> Heroes come in all forms. They're not just first responders. They're not just vets. They're not just anything. A hero could be a kid that goes and rescues a dog out of a road so that it doesn't get run over. And yeah, I get it. The term's used too loosely, but uh, if you haven't noticed the state of America right now, we could use a few more heroes and a lot less. Come look at me because I've got a filter on and I look absolutely gorgeous. Except in person, you look like a dump truck. Any thoughts? Uh, you, you're definitely right. I think that term hero is way the overused and publicized. I mean, they're calling sports, you know, players, you know, basketball players and NFL players and all these guys heroes. You know, they're, they're hero esque material as far as what they can accomplish, but as far as actually being the definition of a hero of doing something heroic, not even close. You yeah. know, if you think about half these fucking athletes, you know, or, or behind the scene drug users that, you know, sit there and domestically abuse their wives and then when they get the camera on them, you know, they're all, look at me, I'm doing these great things, which is horse shit. You uh, know? And, and you're right about that because remember when Bruce Jenner became Caitlyn Jenner, they labeled that a hero. Yeah, um, they, uh, for doing what? What was so there, horrific about wanting you to get your pecker chopped off? I'm sorry. I mean, well, let's just face it. There are thousands of trans that don't get that recognition every other day. You know, well, that's there are point. people that before he came along, there were people that had already come out and had been taking the abuse for years and years and years. And suddenly he comes along and he's a fucking hero for doing it. And I'm like, that's not fair because I have seen and I have friends that have either come out as gay or trans that has had um hate mail or like they've done stuff to their vehicles or whatever and nobody labeled them a hero so that kind of that kind of shit bothers me but you do have stars like machete kills that actually went out and rescued a child out of a turned over vehicle that's a hero so you tell me what these basketball or football or whatever sports the, the, what are they doing that's so heroic besides getting their name in the limelight? I wish I knew. I'm not a big fan of any of the sports people because... I don't watch sports. Anytime they have a camera on them is when they do good. When the camera's off, they're not doing what... There's, there's no great heroes as far as football players or even men, mentors. Um, the days of like Mean Joe Green, those are the days that are gone. Those are like the sports people we can look up to, if that makes sense. But as far as with the Coke commercials and stuff, hell yeah, yeah <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but on a serious note, there, there are well, there are famous well, people well, not that a, do not, good not things. Not a hero, but you know, he was at least someone that kids could look up to. Exactly, a good role model. Thank you. Role model that's, versus hero. That's where they're starting to get model. these things confused. But I'm sorry, a lot of these NFL people aren't even good role models. That's true. True. Very true. 
they'll they'll be like because they get a certain amount of scores and stuff your kids should look up to them until they get cocaine bust or what i don't want my kid to look up to somebody that's using cocaine or steroids or something to cheat his way through the nfl you know but there are famous people like 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 machete kills because i can't think of his fucking name for some reason right now my brain is dead but he did a heroic act and has done other heroic acts or let's let let's use all of our our beloved gary sinise now that's a fucking hero oh even pat tillman he was an nfl player who gave up that career gave up that limelight to go join the service sorry oh, that's uh, you know to give up that kind of money to, to go serve your country during a time of war that a little bit more heroic than, than just playing in the NFL. Well, let's go back to the World War II when most of the baseball players gave up their careers and yep. went. You know, that's why women's baseball came about in the women's leagues and stuff. You know, they, because, and I mean, that's even where the grenade shake came from because there were so many baseball players, they designed it to hold like a fucking baseball. They went and done it and i know it wasn't all volunteer not everybody volunteered i i get that there's drafts and all of that good stuff but what she's saying is basically all veterans claim to be heroes and blah 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 and so she just doesn't thank them that's not how that works if you don't want to thank a veteran or a first responder or whomever that's that's your prerogative but don't sit there and put in a post when a veteran gives their perspective on the subject and that the, the article, basically he did not appreciate, he did not like it. He appreciates it, but he did not like it because it, it made him uncomfortable. And yeah, there's a lot of vets now that, you know, between getting out and going through everything that they went through are socially awkward anyway. You know, we, we talk for 10 minutes and all the people around us suddenly have this look on their face and they're like, you're scary because we're used to talking <laughs> to our brothers or our sisters, whatever. It is what it is, but don't sit there and bash the whole population either based off an opinion that you know nothing about or you've just been around bro vets or the wrong vets, you know, whatever. The thing with people like that is, is where they cut down everybody, they don't appreciate anybody until they are in a situation where someone saves them from something terrible and then they get woke up. To, I mean, you know, they, they, they get their eyes open to what people do for them. Well, the, what, the, the, the bad thing about this is it's actually a the, the page that it was posted on is um, a group that trains service dogs for veterans. OK, so and, and, and when you end something and I hope I didn't offend anyone, you know, you fucking were wrong. OK. I don't apologize for my, my thoughts and thinking. Frag outs never apologize. And, oh, I hope we didn't offend you with our frag out. We're just going to do it. And you either like it or you don't. We're, if you have to apologize and say, I hope I didn't offend anyone, you know you are fucking wrong. So that's what pisses me off. And I don't just think, if I see, like, I'm, I'm near a VA, so I'm always thinking of the older vets or any vet. I had a decent 20 minute conversation the other day helping uh, somebody find bagels. I turn around and realize he's wearing a security forces hat. Well, of course I'm gonna talk to him because those security forces, you know, brings up old memories. And, but I think firemen, I think rescue squad workers, I think police, whenever they have to respond to our store for whatever, even if it's stupid, I always say thank you. You know, or, or be safe. That's my thing, I always say be safe because I'm sorry. I think all firemen are nuts. Who in the fuck wants to run, walk, crawl, crash into anything on fire? <laughs> it's on fire. You're going to get on fire. Why would you want to go in that? There's a whole sense of adrenaline when you go into a burning building. Oh, I know. I know all about that adrenaline. In my job, I still get it every single, just about every single day. But adrenaline's not fireproof. It just makes you think you are. But... Behind, well, just like in the military, in firefighting, we go to school. Firefighting is a science. And yes, just like every other field, sometimes there, there are accidents, sometimes things happen, sometimes people die. It does happen. But, you know, you go in there with fire, fire's number one enemy, a hose, spray the room down, knock the fire down. You can make your, you know, and if you get lucky enough to where you can save someone, 
or save a save a dog, save a cat, save a human. You know, you get filled with a sense of you know, you, you come out of that and you've made a difference in something's life. And that's that was the biggest reward for me. That's why I, you know I was doing it because I enjoyed helping people or trying to. Well, when I, I was torn between security forces and firemen, I qualified for both, but I'd seen backdraft and I was like, you know what? I think I'm just not going to fight fires, but we are about out of time. So um, we're going to go through the gambit here and Frosty, do you have any final thoughts on anything at all pertaining to the show? I think we kind of did an Air Force show today. Sorry about that, but it's fun to reminisce every once in a while. I'm not Everybody thinks with military, all of our memories are PTSD and uh, fueled bad memories. There were some good times, and I don't mind reminiscing once in a while. Well, I've got one big one to say. i got to say a happy birthday to all of my brothers and stuff on this su- upcoming Sunday. Uh, 224 years of the Marine Corps. Semper Fi, brothers. Crayon birthday cake en route. Uh, Winky? No, just remember, light starch, don't get the heavy. Uh, Uncle Fester? Well, with this weekend, happy birthday to the Marines. Semper Fi to all of you. And to all the veterans, I know you hate it, but thank you. Well, at least he knows the difference. So you can say Monday, happy Veterans Day. It's not Memorial Day. It's going to be a rough day for some, but not everybody. Uh, no matter what, there's always going to be memories, but... The following Monday after the show is Veterans Day. People are going to make fun of it. People are going to post from now until then. You know what? Screw everyone. Go out and enjoy your free meals. I mean, I know vets that have got a system where they get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Go out and enjoy it. I know you didn't sign up for free discounts and blah, 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 but you know what? It's your day. It's not like we get many. Fucking go out. Enjoy it. Have a good time. Take your battle buddies. Enjoy it. Be safe. Um, if you drink, don't drive. If you sip the sun, but obey the law. If you drink, don't drive. Do the watermelon crawl. If you're going to tap it, wrap it. Um, don't smoke and fly. And uh, don't be the reason for a safety brief come Tuesday, okay? We oh, do and- not want that. And if you need a ride, there are th- there's no excuse. There's Uber. There's taxis. There's way too many things now. So I don't want to hear Tuesday morning... I fucked up and got a DUI. There's no fucking reason for it. Okay? Anyway, on that note, uh, we are going to say goodnight. This has been your Frag Out. Have a great night, fuckers. And one last thing, Epstein didn't kill himself. Booyah! I feel this is like where Bo needs to go. <laughs> 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 <laughs>